Three drinks at the field house for everybody in this room. Afterwards. But it's going to cost you $10 to get in. Hey, what a turnout here! Sensational. I've heard about this banquet. I've had the pleasure and privilege of emceeing the official football banquet. But this to me is something really special. It's for you guys who have labored and loved and really loved you in return. The seniors who've been here for four or five years, in some case ten years. And we're going to honor you guys tonight. You are the stars of the show. Right? And I guarantee you, there will be no political candidates introduced tonight. Oh, right? Maybe. That's the hell yeah. I think Reagan wants his old job back, but I don't want to give it up. We like... Oh, God, you're so slow to that. Come on, give it up. Head table, first of all. Coach and Shirley Fry, right here. Lovely <laughs> lady here is Joe Williams, my financier, I mean my fiance. And uh, that's the Arizona. Over here we have the lovely bump and even lovelier Bob Elliott, right? Now, assistant head coach Bill Brazier and wife Anne, will they please stand up? There they are. Offensive coordinator Bill Snyder and wife Sharon, right over there. Coach Bobby Stoops and fiance Carol Davidson. Hello. Coach Bob Elliott. Coach Ray Moran, right? <laughs> there he is. Okay. All right. Now we have head trainer Ed Crowley. <laughs> trainer Bob Law. Trainer Russ Haynes. Equipment manager Ron Fairchild. Where are you, Ron? Right over there. Okay. Bob Mundar, and, uh, right, and uh, one of my favorite people, I see constantly all the time, uh, public relations manager for Mac McCausland, sports information director, George Wine. <laughs> right. Executive director, National ICO, Mark Jennings. Coach Hayden Pryor's secretary, the lady that takes the typewriter with her on the trips, Rita Foley. <laughs> Rita. Football secretary, Debbie Abbott. <laughs> Players' wives, Dave Alexander's wife, Deb. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Craig yeah. Clark, Sandy. Right there. Steve Thomas, Diane. Here. No? Okay. <laughs> Players, parents. Dave Alexander, Mr. and Mrs. Lauren Alexander. You know, I think this is important. We're introducing people right at the top of the show here. Tim Batterson, Mr. and Mrs. Jerry Pesch. Right over there. Rick Bayless, Mr. and Mrs. Al Bayless. <laughs> Craig Clark, Mr. and Mrs. Lyle Clark. <laughs> Mike Fry, Mr. and Mrs. Dick Fry. <laughs> Myron Kepi, Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Kepi. J.J. Puck, Dr. and Mrs. Puck. Right over there. Marty Porter, Mr. and 
to Mrs. Mel Porter, manager, sir. Dad Walker and Mr. and Mrs. Gene Walker. Josh Saladay, and you can't say that after too much wine, but I did. Mrs. Marine Saladay. And Mike Horn, Mr. and Mrs. Harvey Horn. I'd like to ask, is Wilma McNally present? Wilma McNally. Now, I'll tell you a story about Wilma McNally. We fell in love years ago when we were five, right, Wilma? Right, okay. Wilma traveled all day, all the way from Chicago by bus to be at tonight's banquet. Let's hear it again for Wilma McNally. A little history. Ten years ago, the Lynn County Art Club decided not to continue with the Iowa Football Seniors Banquet. Several people in this community felt very strongly that it was very important to continue the tradition of honoring these outstanding young men who have given so much of themselves in helping to make the University of Iowa football program the finest in the nation. And I stress that, the finest in the nation. Would you please help me? That's right. No question about it. Would you please help me in recognizing and saying thanks to the following people who have kept the banquet going for the past 10 years. We razz them a lot, but we love them. Dan Berry, Harv Garner, Mark Engelson. <laughs> We'd also like to thank John Creer. Did I hear something from over there? Huh? All right. I'll be down for the free drinks later. <laughs> We'd also like to thank John Krieger and Pat McCartney, who are also members of the committee, who have assisted over the years. I'd like to call your attention to the back of the program. If you look at it, please, because these people deserve to be honored. The individuals and businesses listed there are the ones that make this banquet possible. Unfortunately, our printer made some errors and left off two of the sponsors, Shea Electric and DeWitt Electric, on behalf of the printing company and the committee. We regret the error. Let's give the sponsors a big round of applause. to move ahead and honor these people and bring them forward, the Iowa Seniors Banquet. Before we do that, I had a friend of mine, in fact, my friend right here, who asked me, not being too familiar with the Iowa scene, uh, doesn't it have a special meaning to you to say goodbye to uh, people that you've been so closely associated with that meant so much? over the past four to five years. Hey, I'll tell you, you get wound up with these guys. I know I can't speak as a coach. It's even more so for them. But as a play-by-play -play broadcaster, the moments, the special meetings, the number of people that come up to you and talk to you about games that have been exciting and what that has meant to them. Hey, it's all you guys that have done it. And seven bowl games and all the things that have happened, the excitement we've shared together. And so I'm going to play for one more time, if we excuse us. <laughs> I just one more time. Come on, let me All right, the ball is West Mott at the 24. Iowa's ball, 47 seconds to go. Second down and 22. Hawkeyes have done it before. Can they do it again? They got the first down. They got the touchdown.
And he kissed me on the back of the head. It's not, that had to be, and Bob Elliott has played football down there in Columbus, Ohio. He's coached it down there. And to score that way, a touchdown in that manner, with you Iowa Hawkeyes doing the blocking and doing the running and doing the cheering and doing the coaching, was one of the all-time great thrills of Iowa football. And I go back, hey, so far that I don't even want to admit it, but that is one of the great thrills. Tonight, we're going to honor you guys who made that all possible, that and a whole bunch of other things. And right now, before we do that, however, Hayden, would you like to say a few words first, or do you want to wait till afterwards? All right, Hayden wants to wait till afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but tonight, we're going to bring you up and uh, honor you individually, the seniors, and uh, we want you to say a few words. What Iowa has meant to you, and then we've got some presents and some well-deserved mementos of your Iowa football years to give to you. So I'm just going to bring you up one at a time and have the people meet you as I have known you and Hayden and the coaches have known you all these years. First of all, number one, going alphabetically, Dave Alexander. Dave, come on up here. again and became a superstar. <laughs> we love you, we love you, we love you. Dave, come on up here. Congratulations to you. A few words from Dave Alexander. Uh, thank you. Uh, you guys, everybody's great fans. You know, nobody can go any place else and have fans like you all. Um, I want to say thanks to all my teammates. They're the greatest in the world. Couldn't want anybody or any place different and had, you know, teammates I had. They're great people. But uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Coach Fry and everybody, coaches, give me a chance and uh, get nervous here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife, Deb, she's been she's been a hero, I tell you. I come home in bad mood and she helped me out. And her family, uh, especially my family, we, well, we went through a lot, you know, with me leaving in 83 and then coming back. She helped me out quite a bit there. And for the people here, you know, like Harv Garner and Gene and his wife Donna, every, every time I need a tire for my truck, I just have to call Gene and say, Gene, I need a tire. Come on down. And uh, especially my town hawks, Tom and Catherine Nearham, and they've been great to me. Uh, whenever I need a job during the summer, I didn't have to worry about some of the players, like they have to go out and find work. And whenever I needed work, they Boys there for me, somebody I could talk to. And all the times we went down to Burger King and talked. <laughs> but uh, other than that, everybody's great here, and thanks. It's been great. Good memories. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. The Ring picture and book presented by Coach Hayden Fry. Let's hear it for Dave Alexander. You know, whether you're on the starting lineup, first team, second team, you're a hawk. This man is as much of a hawk as anybody has ever been. Let's bring it front and center, Tim Batterson. Tim Batterson! <laughs> Tim Batterson coming front and center, one of the many great linebackers the Hawkeyes have had over the past couple of years. And let's hear it from Tim Batterson. Thank uh, all the people that sponsored this event. As, as speaking for myself, I know on behalf of all the other seniors, uh, we really appreciate it. And it's, it's a good time. It's, uh, it's a good thing to look at all the memories that we had over four years. And I'd like to give special thanks to my, my parents that have supported me in the past four years and my fiance that has been there. And also, just I think more importantly, I'd like to thank the teammates because they made it all possible. And, that's where all the memories really lies, uh, you know, working with your buddies out there. And something you'll never forget. And, and another thing, I'd like to thank the coach and staff for giving me the opportunity. And I appreciate it, and I tried to make the best of it, and just thank you very much. 
Young man came down from Hugo, Minnesota, came on the Iowa campus, became a starter, became the MVP of the Iowa team, and uh, I know he will have a special place in the hearts of all Iowa fans for a long, long time. We even forget him that he's from Minnesota. Because <laughs> we love him. Rick Bayless! Come on, Rick! Overcame injuries and uh, overcame competition. And right now, Rick Bayless is with us tonight. Rick, take it away. Well, I'm going to keep it short because I have a sore throat. I can barely talk. Um, I'd like to thank the coaches for giving me the opportunity to come here. And I'd like to thank all the players, all the seniors who I've been through all this with. It's been great being around you. But I'd really like to thank my parents for supporting me the first year, the first couple years when I stayed in the on my way to school. You know, it was a tough time. And I know I had so many brothers. There's four of us in college. And that made it tough. But I'd like to thank them. I'd like to thank all the fans. It's been great on my work. He devoted his full time now to cross country skiing. Right, Rick? He loves that too. All right, he's learned, and he's going to become a superstar. And he's earned his place into our hearts as a person as well as a football player. Carrie Burke! Carrie Burke! Well, I guess I'll just have to start off uh, thanking all the uh, your coaches for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to do my thing. Uh, Mark, Jerry, you know, it's been a long time, but I appreciate what you've done. Yeah. And hard, where's hard? <laughs> what can I say? Give <laughs> 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 oh, <wow. laughs> <My man. laughs> well, yeah, it's going to be hard leaving, but I'll probably wander around for a few more years. Hopefully in the off season. <laughs> But, you know, it's been, it's been fun. <laughs> Here it is, Carrie Burke. Next on the agenda, Malcolm Christie. Come on up, Malcolm. <laughs> Malcolm Christie. I'll get out of his way when he comes up here. Come on, Malcolm. Here he is, Malcolm Christie. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to you know my mom and her girlfriends who've been by me. A lot of you people probably don't know who I am. Probably if you do know, it's by saying, "Yeah, I remember that guy. That's the guy I get hurt a lot." You know? <laughs> yeah. And that's you know if I just look at my uh, my career here just by. Uh, I'm missing you, brother. I mean, if I, if I just look at my career just by being hurt and all the bad things that happened to me, and I would be a, you know, a very sad person. But you can't look at the, you know, the bad things that have happened in your life. You know, you got to look at the strength of the education. I will finish up. I promise my mother. I promise Coach that. Yeah. I know I fall for sometimes, just like I, my my weight fluctuates, just like my, my great point. Uh, Second of all, I'd like to thank you know, all my teammates, the ones stayed behind me, and the ones that still tell me, Malcolm, you know, I have one more year left. They said, you know, you should come back and play and finish up, but I realized, you know, the rags on the wall, and when it's time to go, you gotta go. The body, you know, gives up a little quicker than the heart does, and, you know, but uh, I don't know. Now I look back at life, <laughs> I figure, I figure if I have one more year left, I figure if Gary Hart can come back into the race, I can. <laughs> I'd 
I don't even know Donna Rice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you guys have just been incredible. You know, some of you guys have been unforgettable. <laughs> and of course, Coach Fry, you know, like Coach Fry tells me all the time, you know, maybe God has something else planned for you, but I'm not sure. <laughs> student trainers and uh, of course John Streep and there's a great group of guys and I actually know them pretty well too and uh, but most of all I thank my parents uh, they uh, I think they probably missed a handful of games in my five years here at Iowa and uh, of course my wife Sandy uh, had a lot of bad times last year and things worked out they come back and so I thank everybody. Thank you, Craig. Next young man has a special place in my heart because we're both Davenport Blue Devils. I was captain of the track team in my time. My time was a little time ago. And I ran against Jesse Owens one time. This man was the captain of his track team. Always smiles, always happy, loves a guy, Marshall Cotton. Come on out, Mario. Well, 
So I think I need a couple more mental loves after her eyes. I think she feels these just on one of you know. Maybe we'll not, huh? But um, I want to thank the coach, the special coach Fire, you know, who came down to my house while I was a senior in high school and told me that um when I come here, that when I leave here, that I want to be a man and a special man in my heart. And Coach Fry is one of the best people in my life. And um, Coach Jackson, they really did a lot for me. And I appreciate a lot of things they did for me. And um, I want to thank all the fans, you know, who's behind me. You know, people who's there from Davenport and all over the state of Iowa. And um, there's one thing I can say that when I was in high school, a lot of people didn't think um, I was going to make it. But I felt if I worked really hard, that I would make it. And since these five years, Coach Fry stuck behind me. And I worked very hard, you know, got my degree in May, I will. And um, they was behind me all the time. And when I go back to Delport, I would tell everybody in high school that, hey, I made it. And you can make it too. Thank you. Cotton put it. The young man who came here out of the East and uh, got a great future ahead of him. He had a great career at the University of Iowa. What else can you say except Quinn Early? Quinn Early. You know, I'm kind of like like Malcolm. When I first heard of the uh, University of Iowa, I pictured a uh, like a schoolhouse sitting in the middle of the cornfield. <laughs> and I, was, I didn't really know where I was. I was kind of ignorant to the fact, you know, just like when I did first come here, and whenever I tell people I was from New York, you know, they, I don't want you to ask, you know, well, how many people have I mugged, like, in my bed? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was <laughs> Really, first of all, you know, I'd like to thank my mother, who couldn't make it here tonight, and I love very much, and she stood behind me through all my years. And uh, I'd like to uh, thank all the coaching staff, Coach Fry, Coach Schneider. Um, I'd like to thank Mark Eggleston, who's really took taken care of me throughout the years, and we've become very close. And uh, I'd like to thank all the Iowa fans, everybody in this room tonight, who took took the time out, you know, to root for the Hawks, and, and will continue to root for the Hawks in the future, you know, long after I'm gone. Thank you very much. It's a very emotional night, it's a, and it should be, it should be. Young man came out of Cedar Falls, he was high school player of the year, he lived up every inch to what was predicted for him, and he's still got a great future ahead of him. One of Iowa's captains, Mike Flagg. Mike Flagg. Too. Uh, start out by thanking all the coaches and all my teammates. You know, it's really important. Got to thank my parents for making you know every game for five years. That's you know that's a lot. Thank my fiance Kathy. Um, Got to thank uh, all the people who give me jobs and you know, make it through a semester. Get some money. Dick Jackson's here and uh, Barry Bowen and Fred Cross. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. I got to thank Dick Jackson for looking the other way when I broke all those beer bottles. <laughs> I'll uh, uh, make sure I thank you know the trainers, Ed, Bob, Russ, everybody. Thank the equipment staff. Um, and make sure, got to thank uh, Mark Abelson, Mr. Barry, and Harv Garner, especially for last night. Might, uh, <laughs> might not remember, but. <laughs> And, uh, thank Gene and Mrs. Kellum, especially for those cookies. Need to keep those coming in. <laughs> and uh, once again, thanks a lot. This has, uh, you know, been the best five years of my life, and uh, you know, it's been a great time. I'm sure we'll stay in touch with everybody. Thanks. At the times that he's broken through the line of scrimmage, and I had him going for touchdowns, 
And uh, the only reason he didn't make it, I suppose, was because, uh, well, I don't know, but he certainly has made it in terms of providing us with all-time thrills, one of the all-time really great guys that we're going to remember for a long time, Kevin Harmon. Kevin Harmon. Kevin is in absentia, all right? We'll move next to the guy who saved us in the holiday ball by picking up a ball lying on the ground, ran into the end zone with it, provided, I guess, indirectly or directly the margin of victory, Jay Hess. Come on out, Jay. Jay Hess. I just want to thank uh, Coach Fry, Coach Brazier, and Coach Snyder for giving me the opportunity to come up here four years ago. And uh, I want to give, give a special thanks to uh, Coach Elliott. I mean, he's the man who came in here last spring, picked me up off the bone pile, and uh, kept faith in me. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Jay. I don't know what I'm ever going to do when this man is leaving in terms of the number of times we said the kick is good, the kick is good, the kick is good, the kick is good! <laughs> Rob Hobbin! <laughs> keep on doing it. Well, uh, this has really been a great three and a half years. I wasn't here for five years with these guys. But I'll never forget the first time I showed up for winter conditioning. I thought I was in for a long three and a half years, but uh, <laughs> thank God it, it's, uh, it's, it, it's been a little shorter than that, and uh, it's really passed by quickly. I want to thank uh, Coach Fry for having a hard head. I'll never forget the first time I went out of practice and I punted the ball and shanked it, hit him right on the head. <laughs> and, and he, he proclaimed right then and there that I was pretty accurate, and I thought, well, I'm going to have to pay it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. I want to thank Coach Jackson also for uh, giving me a chance. Uh, you know, I got cut early when I got in here because I was a walk-on and probably just an extra body, but uh, he had faith in me and Coach Fry had faith in me to bring it back and really gave me an opportunity and stuck by me and uh, really uh, helped me out. I'd like to thank the rest of the coaching staff too. Uh, they're a great bunch of guys and uh, they really helped me. And uh, thank my teammates and the guys that are here. Uh, We've been through a lot. We've been to a Rose Bowl. We've won two Holiday Bowls, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. And, uh, one thing I wish we could have done was beat Michigan at Michigan, but uh, you know, hopefully next year they can do that. Um, I want to thank my parents for ma making all 37 football games that I played in, putting quite a few miles on a brand new Oldsmobile my dad's not real happy about. <laughs> uh, but uh, he can get a new car now and then wants to put the miles on it. Uh, I just want to uh, thank for the thank for the support and the uh, times that I've been able to uh, show my faith and uh, for people being receptive and for uh, the good place that Iowa is because Miami of Ohio. I know Coach says never put it out in the paper, but I have to admit every time I had a chance, I ripped them in the paper <laughs> uh, because they just didn't show me the, uh, the right way to go. And then Iowa football is a class program and uh, it's got class people. And uh, I want to thank Sheriff Hughes and all the guys that put on the thing tonight because. Uh, they don't have this at other places. Uh, I've talked to quite a few athletes around the nation, and uh, they kind of say, uh, don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Michigan was ever anything better than 1985, right? Number one against number two? And who won it, right? Well, here's a young man who uh, came up out of the area that I grew up in over there in eastern Iowa. Bunch of uh, hog farmers over there. That, right? Huh? Yeah, Kepis? Well known. But uh, I can say that because my relatives all came out of that same area too. And uh, this gentleman came on the Michigan game three years ago, two years ago, I guess it was, when Myron Kepi, Myron Kepi, Myron Kepi was very much a mentioned name. Let's bring him up here now, Myron Kepi!
first of all, I'd like to start off by thanking my teammates. Uh, went through some hard years. It was a little hard when I first got here. I came in the middle of the semester and I didn't know everybody. Um, just right now, when I'm starting to have fun, I have to leave. Uh, and I thank Coach Fry and his coaching staff for having me here, um, teaching me how to be a man, um, and getting my degree. I'd like to thank my mom and dad for making all the games, and my fiance Lori for coming to them, and for wanting to marry me. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, all the guys putting on us tonight. It really means a lot to us, and last night too, even though I remember a little of it. But, um, I just like to thank all the fans and tell them, to everybody I really enjoyed my time here. Thank you. Thank you, Myron. Very well. Jimmy Wall. Jimmy, come on up here. First of all, I'd like to thank my parents who uh, stuck with me this year. You know, I didn't get a chance to play. They actually went to a couple games I wasn't even at. Uh, I'd like to thank my fiance, Jill, who also stuck with me because I guarantee I wasn't very easy to get along with this year. And, I had an opportunity to sit with her in the stands for a couple of games, and she knows absolutely nothing about the game. <laughs> so I tried to teach her as much as I could. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ed, Crowley, and Russ. Uh, I spent so much time with Russ, I think him and his wife were thinking about adopting me. <laughs> and uh, I'd definitely like to thank Coach Fry and Coach Schneider who gave me the opportunity to walk on here and earn a scholarship. And uh, they taught me a lot more about life than just football. Uh, when I was sitting at my table, I was looking for things to say, and a few of the sponsors, I won't mention any names, uh, gave me a few jokes. I wasn't sure which one to go with. But uh, those of you who don't know it, tonight we had uh, Gary Hart's favorite uh, meal, which is rice pilaf. <laughs> say that uh, I would definitely have the, the greatest fans and I, I would have never changed it for anything. I was just glad I have, had an opportunity to play here. Thank you very much. Another young man that comes from a great family of athletes, football players, scattered here and there. Luckily he decided to settle right here. And before that, that his father and mother decided to settle in Cedar Rapids. Came through a great deal of adversity in his sophomore and junior year. But what a year he had in his senior year. J.J. Buck, one of Iowa's captains. J.J. Buck. takes a lot of hard work to do this. Um, I'd also like to thank my parents who, uh, through the uh, whole five years, have uh, really stuck by me. And uh, I love you both very much. Um, the coaching staff has, has really taught me a lot about football. Uh, they, they stuck with me uh, through the five years. And uh, even though I thought I was going to give it up myself, uh, I'm glad I stuck with it. And uh, there's nothing better than to be a Hawkeye. And thank you. Thank you, Jerry James. Some words from the heart. Remember when this young man was recruited out of a tug of war between Iowa and Minnesota? Luckily, the Iowa Hawkeyes won. Joe Schuster! Joe Schuster! Place. And, uh, uh, it's been a great five years, and I need to thank 
Everybody's been thanked to death here tonight already. Uh, but I need to thank them all. Uh, I can thank them all. Uh, all the trainers and coaches and uh, all the great fans. Truly are. Coming down from Minnesota, I think when I uh, drove into Iowa and saw the black and gold everywhere I looked, I think that's what made me decide to come here. I mean, uh, it's been really tremendous. Uh, I especially like to thank all the players and the seniors I'm graduating with. All the memories, never forget them. Uh, I need to thank uh, Gene and Donna Kennel for all they've done for me. Uh, for all your automotive needs, this is my one plug. <laughs> and uh, I need to thank Hot Garner for that parking space behind the store. <laughs> saved me about several hundred dollars in parking tickets for the leaders. Uh, it's been a great, great uh, five years. Thank you, sir. Another senior we want to honor, Dwight Sistra. Dwight, come on up. First of all, uh, I'd like to thank Coach Brazier for uh, having the guts to come in junior college town and recruit me because it was, uh, it was pretty rough. But this season's been pretty good for me. It didn't end like exactly like I wanted to, but uh, Coach Elliott has been one of my best friends. We didn't really get along too well at first because I guess I'm kind of stubborn, and I guess him and uh, the coach staff is also. <laughs> <laughs> but it taught me a lesson as far as, as life, you know, when you do things that you're not supposed to do, you have to suffer the consequences. And, you know, I was a little bitter because I wasn't able to play in the holiday bowl, but by the same token, it's taught me a lesson that, you know, when you do things that are, are not according to the rules, then you have to suffer the consequences. And uh, I'm not bitter at all. I've had a good season. I've enjoyed being here in Iowa two years. And, uh, I wish Coach Fry and the rest of the coaching staff uh, much, much success in the past years and the years to come. Um, I'm a little nervous now, as you probably can tell, but <laughs> just look over that. <laughs> but, uh, in closing, I can say you know, it's been a, a pleasant two years for me, and uh, I hope uh, you've enjoyed it as much as I have going out to Kinnick Stadium on Saturdays. And, you know, igniting the crowd and getting big hits, and uh, hopefully you will remember me because I remember you. Dwight Sistrunk, Dwight will never forget those big hits. And he has been a big hit. Not a young man who came in after spending a little time in Nebraska, told me during the season the toughest time was proving himself, and he really proved himself. Steve Thomas. Come on up, Steve. <laughs> I'd like to uh, everybody thank the coaching staff. I'd like to add that. And uh, I'd like to thank all my friends I've made in the past three years. You know, funny guys like Quinn Early, Dwight Sistrunk, and <laughs> Marshall. <laughs> and then now, you know, I always got a kick out of watching him try to lose weight. <laughs> but, you know, it was, a hard, it was a hard transition coming from uh, Nebraska to Iowa. You know, I didn't know what was in store for me, up, excuse me, over here. And then once I came, you know, people asked, why did you choose Iowa? At the time, I didn't know why, you know. I was, <laughs> But now, you know, I know, growing with you guys and Coach Fry and the staff, you know, people talking about rebuilding, Iowa has a top-notch program, and they told me to compare Nebraska to Iowa. You can't on the field. They're both, you know, a good football program. But, you know, I know I'm not supposed to say this, but, you know, Iowa is number one in my heart because of stuff like this and the fans. And, you know, you guys, the cheering, and everybody's just getting into the game over in Nebraska. They didn't do that. 
you know, let's go Hawks. <laughs> It's a beautiful part of this banquet. It's an emotional thing, and people say what they mean to say. Here's a young man who came out of the East again, came to Iowa. Iowa adopted him. We can't use the term baby Herbie seriously anymore. <laughs> baby Herbie has grown up. <laughs> and here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Herb Lester. guys who put this thing on, their effort is really appreciated. This is really a great thing and kind of sets Iowa apart from all the other schools around and people I have to like from way out there, from way out there, from where you know, where you're from. And I came out here and uh, Iowa really has like the best people around. You know, I came here far away and people like the Clarks, the Sillingers, the Flags. But I could go on and on. All the guys, parents and the teams try to take you in like, you know, you're one of their own. So it's really, uh, it's really a great place. I thank all the coaches, trainers, managers. I mean, everybody's always trying to do their best to win, and that's why we've been doing pretty good. And I wish the team, you know, best of luck in the in the future for the next for the century. Thank you. <laughs> Young man that I knew at Hoover High School in Des Moines, only about two blocks away from me, and uh, was so happy when he decided to choose the University of Iowa. I don't think he regretted one minute. Became an outstanding linebacker, Dan Hurd. Come on up, Dan. Uh, this has really been a great evening. Um, even though my parents aren't here, I'd like to start with thanking them because they've stuck by me through these years and made it to just about every one of the games. And um, I'd also like to thank my girlfriend, Beth, for the last four years of my life and um, her sticking by me through the tough times. Um, Coach Frazier, uh, it's only one year, but it was a great year. And Coach Fry, I'd like to thank you a lot, too, for giving me a chance here to play. And most of all, I'd like to thank you my teammates because um, I don't know if I can explain to you guys, but they're just, they're just beautiful people and, and you, you, you won't be able to know that unless you've actually been with them like I have for the last four years. And uh, I just like to say thanks to everyone for a great four years here at University of Iowa. Scenes. We all know about the coaches. We know about all the support people. We've introduced many of them. But we'd like to recognize the four senior trainers. Would you please stand? Bob Burton, Scott Carnahan, Jolene Christian, and Paige Shepard. <laughs> and I would like to have uh, Josh Saladay come forward. Josh, would you come forward and make a few brief comments on behalf of the senior student managers? Josh Saladay. <laughs> like to thank uh, all the players and coaches for bringing us as part of the team. Even though we don't play, everybody makes us feel like everything we do is special and good for the team. Uh, I'd like to thank for all of us managers, our parents for sticking by us, especially for my, my mom for putting up with all 13 of us. I love you. Uh, I'd like to thank the team for giving us a chance to see a lot of sites that we wouldn't normally see, like uh, the temple I worship, Yankee Stadium. <laughs> uh, and for giving us a chance to take a refresher course in human anatomy at Lake Girls in San Diego. <laughs> Everybody who helped 
helps us, it helps make our job easier, the trainers, the equipment staff, and all the players. Thanks. Thank you, Josh. Uh, a gentleman who deserves the total credit for what the University of Iowa athletic program is today. It's unparalleled in the country. The fact is that uh, there have been more Iowa teams in the top 20 men and women's sports than any other school in the nation in the last five years. And as much can be said for this kind of a banquet, the total meaning that it has to the athletes up here, and you heard it, you heard it in a very emotional night. But I'd like to have a man who is responsible for it all come up and just say a few words. Bob Bellion. Bob? Thank you very much, Jim. I'd just like to take a moment to congratulate the seniors and, and really thank them for the great contribution they've made to the University of Iowa and the traditions in football that are building at the University of Iowa have been for many years, but even more so in the last uh, several years that you men have been here and Coach Fry has been at the University of Iowa. I think it's a tremendous thing that we have going and this dinner this evening is one of the great things that we have going for us. Uh, the seniors have paid tribute to people that have helped them, have been a part of their lives here at the University of Iowa, not only the coaches, but businessmen, people in the community and the fans of the state of Iowa. And that is very, very meaningful because they will cherish those memories and ideas in the future. You've heard it said many times, like Marshall Cotton, what it meant to him tonight, and Rob Howland and Herb Wester both suggested that this dinner was very significant. Uh, hurry out the door so it doesn't hit you on the back end. But what that really means is this, that uh, these men played four and five years and spent a great deal of time in their lives here at the University of Iowa. They had great memories and uh, great things happened to them. They played in a bowl game and we had our senior, ba or the regular banquet. They played the bowl game and all of a sudden it almost drops out of sight. So to pay tribute to them tonight and have an opportunity to say a special thanks to them in this particular evening, at this particular time, is really important to the seniors, it's important to us at the University of Iowa, and we think that this is one of the great events that we have. Again, congratulations seniors, you have done a tremendous, tremendous job for us. Five bowl games you've gone through, Probably the greatest thing of all is, though, that you recall somewhere in this last season, and the seniors can be uh, part of this very much in the leadership uh, role that they played. At, uh, at one part of the season when we were four and three, I think a whole lot of people said to themselves, what's going to happen this year? And this team gathered itself and did one tremendous job and ended up ten and three. So when you add it all up, this is one of the great, great seasons that this team and coaching staff has had in the years that they've been together. So thanks again, seniors, for your great contribution to the University of Iowa. You may recall, you may recall that the banquet down at the Union when Bob spoke, <coughs> and we introduced back in, I think, December 12th or 13th, at the official football banquet, Bump said something very significant. He thought this was the best job of coaching that the Iowa staff under Hayden Fry had ever done since they've been here. And now that we've seen the total season, you've got to say it's the best job of coaching and playing and leadership by the seniors that we've had the chance to meet. So right now we come to the peak of the evening. The man who knows more about you guys and you know more about him but let's just get him up here to say a few words. I know that's a very emotional night for him, because he's told me that in times past. But we'll get him up here. Coach Hayden Fry. Hayden, come on up. Thank you. You know, it's always uh, with mixed emotions that we have this banquet, because we're so proud of the accomplishments of all the seniors that we've had. Uh, and we think about them not being here any longer, it becomes very sad. And particularly for my coaching staff, the guys that 
I worked around the clock to help these young men develop to their potential as athletes, but better yet, as men, and citizens, and students. And uh, just be completely impossible to accomplish what these fellows have accomplished. I don't know if the impact has really hit you or not, but in the last five years of these fellows' career, they had the best one-loss record in the Big Ten. In the last seven years, we've had the best one-loss record in the Big Ten. Of course, some of these guys weren't around that long. But most of them were here for all five years. That, that is an unbelievable accomplishment. It's like when we regrouped after the embarrassing loss to Michigan this year, we knew we were a much better football team. We didn't play well, and Michigan did. They just rebounded from being defeated from Michigan State. Their quarterback had thrown seven interceptions. So we loaded up to stop the run, knowing that uh, they weren't going to throw the ball. But it so happened that uh, the quarterback completed the first three or four passes he threw, and they got hot, they got their confidence back, and uh, they truly put it on us. Following that game, these guys present tonight, the seniors, the guys that really gave us the leadership, got together. And we made a, an honest assessment of our situation. And that is that, hey men, let's get our heads screwed on straight. The University of Iowa and the state of Iowa deserve better than what we did against Michigan. We're capable of winning the rest of our games. So we took each game one by one, asking each guy to give all that he had, and they did. They responded. What you don't really know, I'm sure that uh, Gary and, and uh, some of the other people that are real close to the football team know what a tremendously unbelievable job that our medical staff did. When I look at this roster of graduating seniors, it's like reading Ed Crowley's injury report from day to day. <laughs> And I'm talking about tragic in injuries that would normally have kept uh, a person out for the whole season. Some guys didn't miss but one game. Some missed a couple. Uh, some of them had surgery and, and returned before the season was over with. But nearly all of these guys, uh, Puck, he, he has two operations on his shoulder. His, his shoulder is still not uh, all the way back. And had to make tackles with his right shoulder. Dan Worth unbelievable what he went through throughout his career. Uh, always there, made every practice that he could possibly limp on the field. Uh, Steve Thomas operated on his finger a couple of times, uh, hurt continually, but for the big game, Steve was always there. Had seven individual sacks this year. To give you an idea of his effort, a lot of times playing on one leg. Dwight Sistrunk. Dwight was a little bit new. He hot dogged a little bit coming into the junior colleges. But who can take away from his performance the big plays, the big hits? Uh, when I corrected him about running to the Indiana sideline during the ball game after a big interception, uh, waving a ball at the Indiana Hoosiers, I said, Dwayne, we don't do that here. <laughs> after the game, he came up and he said, Coach, I understand what you're talking about. But he said, it's real hard for me to break it. And I said, OK, I'll look the other way. <laughs> Kerry Burt wasn't expected to play. Couldn't participate last spring. When we lost uh, Keaton Smiley, Burt, he's, he was the only glue that we had to hold together a brand new secondary. And Kerry sucked it up. He had treatment two and three times a day just to be able to make practice. Sometimes he, he walked around worse than I did. He, he really looked like an old man out there limping around. But on game day, when the ball was snapped, Kerry Burt, once again, as a strong safety, was all Big Ten. Uh, we were so hopeful that he could go ahead and, and, and break Kyle uh, Nile Kinnick's record with interceptions. And, and But for the last two ball games, it was so highly publicized that George Wine and Phil Hattie and that group did a great job publicizing. No one would throw in his area. He didn't have a chance. And uh, it even carried over, I noticed, carry to the, to the hula bowl. Nobody would throw in your area. But we'll always remember it because if you'd had a chance, you would have tied the record. Jimmy Morrow, walk on. Just did a fantastic job, started his junior year, broke a leg in the first game against Tennessee, and as Jimmy said, it was a very difficult season, very depressing. I've never seen a young man work any harder to come back to be able to play. And but by, by that time, he had two or three guys up ahead of him who'd been there and playing is real hard to get him into the ball game. And I know that Coach Snyder and I both, we, we bled with you, Jimmy. I'm sincere because you're such a great competitor, and but you made such a great contribution while you were here. Uh, Craig Clark, 12 days in, in intensive care last spring. 
Didn't know what he was going to live or not, much less ever play football. In fact, we were told that he wouldn't. And to see this guy come back and have the great senior year that he had, uh, when Mike Flagg was having the best year that he'd ever had, Marv Cook having the best year he'd ever had, and yet Craig kept making the big plays for us. He didn't have a lot of opportunities on the pass plays, but when he did, he took advantage of them. And uh, just inspirational. Marshall Cotton, the fun guy on the football team, like Jim said, always with a smile on his face, Mr. Spirit, Mr. Enthusiasm, beaten up continually. He normally played the role of a blocker. He, he's like a glorified guard in the backfield. When he got in, you probably noticed that probably half the time he was in the ball game, he got to touch the football because I loved the guy so much. We called a screen pass or called something just for Marshall because we knew that he'd go 120 miles an hour. And you just can't put a value on a person like Marshall as to the morale and spirit of the team of never giving up, never quitting. But certainly he had that chance coming out of high school being All-State, a championship football team, and suddenly being regulated to number two. Uh, you heard from Malcolm Christie. Malcolm's done a wonderful job of retaining his sense of humor. <laughs> and no one has been crippled more than Malcolm. And as he said, he'll probably be remembered for his injuries, but not for those that really know Malcolm. He wanted to. And it seemed like each time he'd get ready to make his bid for number one, he'd receive another crippling injury. Uh, Malcolm's a great person. And I, I truly believe that all of these guys have an opportunity, even sis, who didn't really think that uh, education was all that important one time, will actually get their degrees. But sis Trump will eventually get it. <laughs> and, and for you people that don't know why he didn't make the holiday bowl trip, it's because he didn't go to class. Because it was so important to him to concentrate and get ready for each ball game, even though he was wounded, uh, fractured left arm, etc. He played in every game. He could only catch the ball with one hand. He, he couldn't make an interception with two, but he made interception after interception, tackle after tackle. And uh, I want to publicly say, he says, because you are a great person, you're forgiven. We missed you at the Holiday Bowl. There's no question about it. Rick Bayless, who could walk on, pay his own way for two years, and then rush for 1,150 yards his junior year, first team all Big Ten running back, and then have a crippling injury. And to watch this guy that everybody loves, the, the, the lineman loved him because I knew if they just gave Bayless a little piece of daylight, he was going to make yardage. Uh, he also was a great receiver. He did everything. Coach Jackson had him on every specialty team. And uh, like several of the other fellows present, he, he thought that every time that he went down covering a punt or whatever, he's supposed to make a tackle. Uh, for us to be able to win 10 games with Bayless, and Kevin Harmon, both crippled throughout the years, is truly remarkable. It threw a lot of pressure on all the other players to take up the slack. But Bayless, because of his spirit, he'd come out every day, and he was on the edge, and Ed will verify. He wanted to play, and he wanted to play a month before he was ready. And uh, I don't know how Ed and Dr. Albright and the other trainers did such a great job just keeping Bayless with us mentally, because after experiencing the great success he had, to keep putting him off, putting him off because he truly wasn't healthy enough to play, but Rick thought that he was. Kevin Harmon, the same situation. Kevin normally didn't work out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We'd get him in some practice time maybe on Thursday. Uh, and then between Rick and Kevin and a, and a freshman by the name of Tony Stewart, uh, that was it from a running back standpoint. Uh, I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, had any one of those guys been completely healthy this year to give us more effort at the running back position, uh, all of you watched Bayless break for the long TD, we would have been back in the Rose Bowl. There's no question about that. But you have to be so lucky. But we just thank the good Lord for people like Rick Bayless for the courage and determination he's shown. Uh, Tim Patterson, you don't know a whole lot about Tim. I guarantee the coaching staff does. It's like uh, I get a big kick out of Bill Brazier. Bill Brazier's first year to coach the linebackers, he comes in after the first practice. He said, Coach Fry said, I've never seen a greater group of young men than I've inherited at linebackers this year. And everybody knows about J.J., tremendous football player, overcoming the injuries, et cetera. Everybody knows about Dan Worth, what he's overcome and so forth. Everybody knows about Brad Quas, not supposed to be able to play with a bad neck. Uh, 
Melvin Foster, injured right off the bat. Riley, out for four or five games. But anyway, Bill Brazier comes in. He's got a big smile on his face. I said, Brazier, you got to be crazy smiling. He said, you know what, Coach? He said, I just have so much faith and belief in these guys. He said, and the first guy I want to talk about is Tim Patterson. Had all these proven stars, the guys that had been there, and Tim had been on the specialty team and everything. But we went back just out of curiosity, Tim. You never heard me say this, to check. Tim Patterson did ever miss practice. He'd walk on, turn his scholarship, never miss practice, regardless of what, how beaten up he was, how hurt. He volunteered for every team that we ever had. Coach, I don't want to push myself, but if I can help out on any of the teams, I'm ready. And I, I really think that uh, Batterson exemplifies the spirit of being a real Hawkeye. And uh, Tim, I want to say on behalf of uh, Coach Brazier and myself and Coach Alvarez, when he was here as a linebacker coach, you know, you're the kind of guy that's, that's helped us win. We greatly appreciate it. Next, Big Dave Alexander. He alluded to the fact that he left. We pulled Dave out from underneath an automobile. He came here one year and he decided to become a mechanic. And he left school. He was a grease monkey. The sad thing about it is he was enjoying it. I just don't know. I think he's got such a wonderful mom and dad, uh, Lauren and Linda. And uh, his mother, she looks like she's still on campus. I, I always get her mixed up. She always says, you know who I am. And I, and I really have to think hard. Uh, that anyone that pretty could have anybody as big and ugly as Dave. <laughs> but Dave, David is a Jill. He's the guy who moved over from defense to offense, learned the offensive plays, played guard and tackle, crippled the whole time. He just wouldn't let us take him out of there. He just, I guess, Ed, you probably, you count up the money on tape that you just spent on Alexander would be rich. <laughs> but once again, exemplifying the great spirit that helped us win 10 ball games. Moving down the list, some of the guys that stayed a little bit healthier, Quinn Early, spectacular year. He would have had that last year, except he broke his shoulder, a clavicle. He was out six or seven games and fought his way back in the lineup. Then last spring, won the Big Ten long jump. He won it twice. Uh, never had a more uh, a player that improved more during his career than Quinn Early. Quinn was a sprinter in high school, uh, great neck New York. Coach White and I went out to, to look at him. He's the only youngster I've ever had to walk up to me in the hallway with a sport coat and tie on and say, Coach, and he didn't even know where I was located. He said, I'd like to come to Iowa. <laughs> Just think about that a moment. I think there's something about Quinn Early that makes him special. He knew what he wanted. He knew he did have a real fine art school. He has matured. He's become a, a tremendous artist. He does the artwork for the athletic department. Uh, he led the Big Ten. He broke all kinds of records and receiving and so forth. Uh, he's got a fabulous career ahead of him in pro ball, like many of these guys do, because he's going to keep improving, because he's motivated to do so. But like all these other guys here, we've got one captain that's not with us, Dave Haight, who will be back next year. But all these, uh, there's five captains in here, and Quinn was one of them. And uh, uh, just an unbelievable young man. I'll move on here, because I know we're running short of time. Myron Kepi, another guy that just played with aches and pain, in fact, he was even going back down to Durant to see a push and pull doctor to give him a little relief. And, uh, you know, had to talk to his dad, had to call Uncle Roy, everybody, you know, that, uh, uh, but really. I know some of your teammates think he was probably sleeping on the floor because he'd had a couple too many soda pops. He had to sleep on the floor because his back hurt so much. This hurt so much. And yet, he was out there helping us win on Saturday. You remember the first time that uh, Kepi went in the ball game against Michigan? He was 13. The first two tackles went down. Dan McCartney was scared to death to put Kepi in the lineup against Michigan. Uh, all he did in the first seven plays, he made four individual tackles. He was in on the other three. Just incredible. All he needed was an opportunity. And uh, gee, what a great job he's done for us. Joe Schuster, another guy. Breaks his uh, ribs playing softball. Puts his arm in a cast, plays great football for us. Uh, this year he stayed healthy, turned in a, a magnificent season. Uh, and when I say healthy, you know, if, you're, if you can walk on one leg, you're healthy for the Hawks. And uh, Joe did a fantastic job. Talked about Steve, talked about Dan, saved the little guy for last. 
I don't know how he did it, but you would think because he had such a great target to hit that he would have been crippled more than all the rest of them. But the guy, to my knowledge, he may have missed a practice somewhere back down the way, but I didn't check. But to my memory, he never missed a game, never missed a workout that he could play in. Herb Wester was 325 pounds when we recruited him in high school in Nashville, New Hampshire. We told him he had a scholarship if he checked in at 285. We didn't really know if, if he had the determination and guts to do it. He reported in the first day for the freshman class at 275. That told us right then we had a winner in Herb Wester, and he exemplified that on and off the field throughout his career. Great ladies and gentlemen with great, great people. Uh, all of them, as I've told them face to face, all of them aren't the greatest athletes, but they're the greatest competitors and gentlemen and leaders that we've had. This is the only group of seniors we've had since we've been here, or in the history of Iowa, I should say, Bum, that have had the privilege or the honor to be on two teams that won 10 games during the regular season. No other group of athletes has ever done that at Iowa. Just had one other team back in about 59 that won 10 games. These guys did it twice. In 85, when they were number one in the nation, five or six consecutive weeks, till we hit the Buckeyes, the Monsoon, over in Columbus. And then this year, coming back off the mat, as, as Bump mentioned, to win their last six ball games. The determination, the spirit, the effort, uh, the willingness to fight through any obstacle uh, is truly unbelievable to all you guys. And we're very, very fortunate tonight to have a young man in our audience who wasn't a Hawkeye football player, but he exemplifies everything I've just said about all you seniors. A guy that lived a much tougher life than you guys, overcome much more than any of you guys, and he's with us tonight. I like for him to stand so you guys can all really applaud the real winner. Would John Slater please stand up? John, all of you know that he had a very tragic event happen in his life, and uh, he wasn't going to be with us. And this guy has shown so much courage, determination, and uh, as happy as anyone in this room tonight, he's fought through it, and loving parents and friends and doctors and people have, have given John the faith to hang in there. And uh, gee, John, it's great to have you with us tonight. I mean that sincerely. For all of you trainers, All you trainers and, and managers and equipment people, we just couldn't express our appreciation enough. You, you've been super. You're the guys behind the scene that make everything go. I know Ed and his crew are up there before the coaching staff begins. They're there after we leave. And my coaching staff works around the clock. In fact, some of them couldn't be here tonight because of recruiting. And uh, I, I know they hate it. But we've got to bring in another outstanding group. And I might say this. Uh, there's two, two other things I'd like to mention. Our recruiting is going extremely well. We only have one scholarship left, if you can believe that. We haven't made the announcement publicly, but we've never had our sack full this early of quality athletes, quality students, quality people. And these seniors have had a lot to do with that in regards to uh, uh, recruiting all these youngsters, get the early commitment. Okay, the other two things I want to mention. The guy that means as much to me as any player I've ever been associated with in my life. Uh, truly an inspiration. I think sometimes we all forget maybe why we're here or how we're living. And maybe sometimes we forget to take maybe a self-inventory of ourselves, good, bad, or indifferent. This guy, to me, epitomizes what life's all about. I've never been associated with a, a person that's as happy that's as team oriented, or in a clutch situation, perform up to his capabilities, whatever they might be. And I don't know how in the world we'll replace any of these graduating seniors, but how we can ever replace a guy uh, that's meant so much because he had to coach himself by himself. He got instructions from me and Coach Jackson. But for a guy to motivate himself day in and day out, be a great Christian, be a leader of our other players on the football team, 
Uh, I just wanted to single out uh, the special recognition. Uh, and the reason I say he's the last because uh, you might recall this guy walking over to me when San Diego State last year called a timeout. We had four seconds remaining. This guy walks over to me, he puts his arm around me and starts laughing. He said, hey, coach, said they're trying to ice me. <laughs> it never entered his mind that he could miss the field goal, fan the ball, or whatever. He knew that he was going to believe it. I was going to make it because he believed. And, uh, of course, I was trying to stay loose myself, and I looked at him, and I said, uh, hey, Rob, I said, the good Lord's not going to let you miss this one. You've already missed your quarter tonight. <laughs> And he goes back out like he did in so many ball games and put it through the upright. Uh, Rob, uh, I, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but you're special. All these guys are special. But you performed when you had to time after time after time. But more important than that to me and the rest of the coaches, you're a superhuman being, young man. We love you. The last thing in closing, and, and Jim and Nick are saying, but we haven't released this publicly with everyone been on the road recruiting, but in my opinion, we have just hired the most outstanding weight condition coach in college football. A young man who's had 47 players going to professional ball. I've received letters from practically every one of them complimenting uh, Ray Moran for his weight training techniques, how much he's helped them prepare to be a winner. Uh, the team record off and on wasn't all that good, but he wasn't a coach. He was in charge of conditioning, weightlifting. I really feel that he's going to help Ed Crowley and his group eliminate a lot of the injury. Uh, we're going, we are going to change our emphasis from the knowledge machine to the free weights, the heavy weights, the Olympic weights, however you want to classify with a guy who's won a national championship, who's extremely knowledgeable. So I'd like for the Hawkeye family to welcome a fellow we just hired from the University of Wisconsin as our new weight coach, Coach Ray Moran. Ray, would you stand up, please? <laughs> what about you, Tony? If you have an opportunity to introduce yourself to Ray, I know he's appreciated being here, leaving his family up in Madison, uh, trying to find a place to live here and conduct uh, weightlifting. Our guys, the seniors, have all gotten a, a little chuckle out of Ray coming in probably because this is the first time that we've had our players report at 6.15 in the morning uh, for weight workouts and conditioning and running and all these guys, they're, they're kind of happy they didn't have to go through that. But ladies and gentlemen, we've been so close uh, winning the whole ball of wax. I'm talking about not just the Big Ten, which we've done a couple of times, but we've also lost a couple of games out in Pasadena. And our whole goal and ambition is to go back out there and win. And we think just that little extra effort, which we refer to as the fifth quarter, that's one quarter more than the other teams practice or lift weights or whatever, that Coach Moran can help, help us get over the hump, just that little bit. And I'm not putting pressure on Ray, but we checked him out thoroughly. We think just that little extra bit, hopefully we'll keep a few more guys healthy that were injured because of the weightlifting program. If that's true, then we hope to see all of you in Pasadena. And I, I've got to say something to Terry, Terry Tiggins sitting over here in the corner, and I look out here at my good friends and celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary on the cruise last year with the coach you. See Wilma, who came all the way down from Chicago, she was on the cruise, and John, and there's so many guys here and ladies that were on the cruise. We got that cruise going again this year. And if you haven't signed up, you want to do it because it's a blast. It's a lot of fun. You, you see the coach in a little bit different environment. Uh, we don't have to strap our head gear on real tight or screw our cleats on tight. And uh, it's really I publicly want to thank you for making this available to the coaching staff. It's just, it's just something that we all look forward to. It's a, it's a place to unwind after having a real good recruiting season. And uh, that thing's going to come up around the 28th of February, so if you haven't signed up, we'll scratch your pennies together. It'll be a great trip. In closing, let me say this. The past seven years, when we've actually won more games than anyone else in the Big Ten, have uh, laid the foundation for greatness. These guys will always remember what they accomplished here. They'll always remember their teammates, 
to remember the good. Some of them will have some bad things to remember. Because when you win, it's not easy. You have to go through a lot of things that are very tough. As a head coach, I have to make a lot of decisions that are really tough. But I try to make them from a standpoint, what's best for the team, not necessarily the individual. All my coaches are geared the same way. Therefore, all these young men, when I say they're truly great people who have survived and to have won, and every one of these guys, and as I said, I'm hopeful that Chris Trump will come back, because right now he's the only guy that at this time we can't project as being a graduate. And I'm saying this personally for Seth because he knows we want him to get that degree. He can't play football all of his life. He's got about 55 years of living to do after he leaves Iowa. So on behalf of all you guys that are getting your degree, help Seth get his. Then we'll get this back in a thousand percent. Jerry, thank you and your committee. You people are truly wonderful. I know that Bump, uh, in recruiting me, said, Coach, he said, I, I, I can't put everything down on paper that's a value to the University of Iowa. He said, just let me tell you this. You'll have more love and appreciation for your coaches and your players. The University of Iowa is head of arena football. Now it's been sanctioned as an official league. Jim, I'd like to have you stand up. Where are you? Jim Foster, right there. And I see that in a very practical way because some of you guys might want to talk to him. I need so much to play with uh, for him and, and some of the other former Oxar too. So Jim Foster will be in the room. And I can't wind up uh, without saluting my good buddy, the sheriff, Gary Hughes. Gary Hughes. <laughs> Gary is the man who taught me the two worst words in the English language are cash bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's the better for adult consumption, right? And especially for you over there. We'd like to ask the sponsors to come forward and after the banquet, I guess it is. After the banquet. You have some gifts up here. You sponsor too. I can't think of a more appropriate way to wind up tonight. Has been an emotional night. It's been a meaningful night. It's been a fun night. It's been a spiritual night. Then to wind up with Rob Ivan giving us the benediction. Rob? We just thank you for this time and this time of fellowship. We just pray that you protect each and every one here, especially the seniors of the honor that you would like look after them in their future endeavors and that you would just protect them and keep your guiding light on them. We thank you for this great state and for the country that we're in that we're able to come here and freely meet. And we thank you, Lord, for just the great lives that you've given us and the blessings you've given us and that you keep this in perspective for us. And we thank you and pray that you protect us as we go home this evening. And look after us uh, for days to come. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Rob. Well, let's see here. The Johnson County High Club is sponsoring a wrestling luncheon on Friday, February 5th, 1988, 12 noon. Iron Man in. Featured guest speaker will be Coach Dan Gable. Tickets are available. $6 a person. They be purchased up front after the banquet. Dan is mad. He wants to get that number 10, and he needs your support and help. And uh, I'm sure he'll get it. So try to be out there, Dan. And sponsors, please come up. You have your gifts awaiting you. And on behalf of myself, all the fans in the room, and everybody who loves Iowa football as much as I do, we love you, we love you, we love you. Thank you very much. <laughs>